Today I made a game using ChatGPT and it only took 6 hours and 84 prompts to get exactly right. So this is the game here, it's called Altman's Adventures and it chronicles uh, you the player playing as Sam Altman uh, attempting to evade the board of OpenAI and collect hearts from your employees as you go along. And so, <laughs> topical game at the moment in that, but I built this um, probably 90% using code only generated from ChatGPT, uh, GPT 3.5, and I did about the last 10%. It's incredible that in today's day and age, um, someone with no previous game development experience can make a game in six hours and have it ready and shipped. And today I'm gonna take you through all, through all 84 prompts that I used um, well, okay, well, not all 84, but we'll talk, of them, uh, talk about each of them a little. All 84 prompts I used uh, to create the game from scratch, what went into it in the background, and how you two can create games just like this one. So over here, I actually have a live running version of Altman's Adventures. Gather love from your employees and avoid the board. We have three difficulty modes, Easy, Medium, and Satya Nadella. Of course, the OG. Um, and then at the bottom here, some instructions. Use the up and down keys on your keyboard or press uh, on your touchscreen to move. Definitely works better on desktop. So here we go, let's go play easy mode and let's see what happens. So when the game loads, we generate a nice blue background. We've got sand that we can move up and down here on the screen. And of course, the objective is to avoid the open AI board and collect love from our employees along the way. So let's go, let's collect some love. Hey, looks all good. Things are running smoothly at open AI. Bam, your aunt consistently candid with your communications and then bad stuff happens. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the end of the, end of the game. We score three points here. We can uh, vote to bring back Sam and Greg and then the game starts again. Not too shabby if you ask me. And uh, I, I've, I've played around with working with some nice uh, scrolling backgrounds, but I didn't get very far. And yeah, let's go and play the Satya Nadella mode instead. And you'll notice there's just a fuck ton more going on. There's chaos, but there's also the option to win a lot more. Uh, you can get a lot more love, a lot more scores and that while avoiding all these damn open AI uh, board uh, JPEGs. So yeah, that is uh, the main functionality of the game. It works pretty decent on mobile as well, but obviously uh, better performance here on desktop. So I used ChatGPT, the GPT 3.5 model for this project since everyone's got access to ChatGPT. GPT-4 and ChatGPT Pro are much better coders since they were trained many years afterwards with better architectures and if you use something like the Cursor IDE or GPT-4 to do this project you'd probably find much better results and get it done faster and with less prompts than I did but not everyone has access to that so I wanted to do this project with ChatGPT and it turned out just great. So I used ChatGPT for everything in this project actually even things I didn't need to. I asked it for, first of all I started out asking it which um, game development framework I should use. I googled the ones that it suggested and then I decided, hey, 3JS looks cool because I recognize some of the games that have used it in the past and its website was pretty cool. And then I used ChatGPT to design the original structure of the game, how to display um, the different sprites, how to do the movement, how to do the collision detection, all the way down to where should I host the thing and how should I get it onto GitHub pages, which is where the website is currently and where you can check it out. And so yeah, ChatGPT was pretty good at offering some good advice for all of these things. The thing that actually took the longest in this project was refactoring the code. Near the end of the project, I was, it was starting to get very messy and I had copied and pasted a lot of different stuff and had um, changed some stuff without f plugging it back into ChatGPT and so it was starting to get very messy and confusing. And so for my own sake, I started refactoring it manually and that was probably a mistake. I probably should have given it all to ChatGPT and had it refactor it. Um, but that probably took about an hour in itself, just trying to refactor it and fix it and get the background back on top of the characters and that. And so, yeah, I guess in today's AI day and age, don't always trust yourself, sometimes trust the computer. Another thing that took a long time was getting the bounding boxes and collisions uh, working. So when you have the character there and the um, hearts and the open AI logos are moving across the screen and detecting a collision, that actually took quite a lot of time to get right because it was finicky. And you know, it's to do with 3D graphics and matrices and orthogonal matrices, kind of the stuff that I did in my final year project last year with my 3D hand uh, gesture control of a virtual object in augmented reality. Same thing, working with um, 3D graphics and that can be difficult and so that actually took a decent amount of time. But what I think actually ultimately took the most amount of time to get right in the project was the damn title screen and getting the um, title and the uh, images in the background set up just so that you can start and select the difficulty of the game. It was fiddly HTML on that and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that nice to work with and so that actually took the longest. And just so you know, this entire project is a plain index.html file which links to a JavaScript file with about 450 odd lines of JavaScript, pure JavaScript inside of it with uh, the 3JS library um, doing the heavy lifting of the game sprites, um, collision detection, matrices, all that sort of stuff in the background. 
um, and it's actually served by CDN and then all hosted on GitHub pages. And so really simple vanilla application, but with the power of like an AI coding assistant, a really nice solution can come out of simple tools. So here you'll actually see the OpenAI prompt that I used to start off the project. Hey, I wanna make a game that works in the browser that has a character in place on the left of the screen, background scrolls towards the character, here are the obstacles, what JavaScript frameworks and libraries can I use? Here's a couple of ones that it suggested. I went and Googled them and then bam, we ended up with 3.js. Um, and then I went and asked it, okay, I want to use 3.js. Please generate all the JavaScript code for the game. Here's some things about the character, scrolling behavior and that. And it actually came up with a pretty decent uh, first draft of the game. Um, so recently ChatGPT has been getting lazy. So you can see here it asks to implement your background here as a textured pane or another shape. Implement obstacle creation logic. Implement hard creation logic here which is like not on, we wanted to generate that for us. And so keep in mind, GPT-4 might be better at these things. Um, but a lot of this code here, like this character geometry, the score display here, that was left right into the final version and worked perfectly and displayed the score at the top right of the screen, which is exactly what we wanted. It added event listeners for handling the, um, touching the keys in that, getting the character move, to move. So really decent start in that. And so then um, straight away, I got a reference error, three is not defined. And then it told me, oh, you need to include the 3JS library. You can import it via CDN. And so just like taking your, your program's output, throwing it straight back at ChatGPT and asking it, hey, how do I solve this problem? Yielded some really good results for this. And it's like pair programming. It's like having a really advanced senior developer with you. Hey, how do I fix these things? So then I included the uh, 3JS CDN and then things really got cracking. So then we started just building up the different components like, oh, the background isn't showing, how can I get that working? Oh, you just outputted the same code, please actually implement the collision detection logic and then it did a pretty good job with the bounding boxes. I um, then wanted to in in convert an image and use it in the game, so it told me how to do that. So I, I just downloaded some images from Google, um, removed the background real quick on my Mac and then like plugged them straight in. Uh, I then threw all the code back to ChatGPT and asked it like how I could adjust it to do some of the, to fix some of the errors, uh, like the background not showing and the character image being blocked by cores. And then I eventually just threw that away and quickly hosted it on a quick web server on my computer just because the cores errors were nasty. And I think I spent um, several prompts, yeah, struggling with cores errors. <sighs> the life of a web developer. And then eventually we started getting um, better things happening and then we started working on the character sprite being visible. And yeah, just like back and forth debugging in that, that eventually we got the character showing, we got the sprites um, showing on the um, screen and moving across and it started to actually take shape. So then as things started getting on, I decided, okay, I need a title screen where you can select easy, medium and Satya Nadella difficulty levels. I then asked ChatGPT to generate that for me. And so then I got it's difficulty um, numbers here that would affect the amount of um, sprites that are thrown onto the screen and pulled across to the user, like I demoed to you. Here's the difficulty buttons, throw them in straight with like document.body.penchild, very messy implementation and not the way you want to build a scalable application. But once again, this is for speed. And if I asked it to use a component library like React or Vue and to do things in a re reusable in that way, we could have got things done much more nicely. And we could have spent, I could have spent hours more on this project refining, cleaning things up, uh, using less lines of code, using best practices but that's not what this project is about it's about how fast can we get a game up and running uh, that not a lot of people will look at anyway and so that's what this is all about and I was really happy that yeah difficulty levels um, got that sorted very quickly I threw the code back to it asked it hey you know why is this line failing with read properties of undefined and I spent a long time moving variables around this is when the refactoring came in that was not a good idea then near the end of the development life cycle things were looking good I asked it to enable the functionality for up down movements on mobile uh, did it like almost instantly and then also asked the uh, troubleshooting now how I could prevent scrolling on mobile how I could show the right background and then finally the last prompt I asked it like how can I deploy this game as simply as possible I decided ahead of time I wanted to use github pages because it's free and everyone can use it with a public repository so yeah here, here's some quick instructions uh, upload it to github pages and then yeah we ended up with this version of the app here that's hosted on github uh, at uh, this address here I'll put it in the link if you want to have a look at it um, and that's live on the internet and working just as it should. And so that was very positive and I was very happy with the way the whole development life cycle uh, went. Um, and I don't think I could have actually done it uh, any faster. But yeah, looking at the actual code here, you can see um, I ended up with all the variables here at the top. Some of the scene, camera and renderer setup. This was the, um, like the matrix multiplication and the, uh, how do you say, 3D graphics setup that is quite finicky to get right. 
I added my event listeners and then the refactoring that I mentioned, I put everything into separate functions and this broke a whole lot of things, but we eventually got it up and running again with some help from um, my varsity days of coding and uh, obviously ChatGPT. Got the sprite generation frequency. This changes how often the uh, sprites uh, show up on the other side of the screen. And this is to do with the difficulty levels. Create the moving sprites just using math.random and how often they should be showing up. Moving the colliding sprites basically just moves them across the screen each time the function is called. Handling touch screen, get the character bounding box, checking collisions, and then basically just animating it. So every time the animates function is called, move the character up and down if the buttons have been pressed, move the moving characters left to right, update the score, and then yeah, create the difficulty buttons right at the beginning of the project. So it's only 450 lines long. It's an index.html file and a main JS file within just the images. And that's it. I mean, that's the entire project uh, built with ChatGPT and some uh, like 10% of my own input. Very happy with the final result and can damn well say that ChatGPT is going to make me a much better developer. So in conclusion, could I have built this game manually by myself with no AI coding assistance, just looking at the 3JS documentation and Stack Overflow and moving the objects from left to right, from right to left across the screen and doing it manually? Definitely. It might have taken me a lot longer than six hours though, and I definitely wouldn't have moved at the speed at which I did. And in fact, like, it's a single evening and morning, have a complete game shipped, ready to go, hosted on the internet. And so I coded about 10% of the solution, ChatGPT did about 90%, and I did some reorganizing, refactoring, and a little bit of uh, buggy changes. Um, it's questionable how valuable that contribution is. That last 10%, uh, you know, might just be 10% that will be automated away very quickly with um, better models like GPT-4, or is that 10% actually like really valuable in that it's the fine, nitty gritty, debugging, taking knowledge from multiple sources, combining them, synthesizing an answer. Uh, that an AI is not good at yet. I'm not so sure. Um, I'm keen to use GPT-4 for an upcoming website development project and then we'll see just how good those new models are at doing that complex information synthesis. Once again, it took 84 prompts to get this project right, all the way from the beginning concept of the uh, game right to the end, where should I host it, give me some instructions for GitHub pages instructions. Um, not bad if you ask me for overall application and uh, going from absolutely zero game development skills to a working game prototype that I'm really happy with. And so yeah, let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more videos like this. Um, I'm gonna make a video in the next few days about coding a website completely with ChatGPT or perhaps GPT-4. Um, I'm really excited about the new AI developments and that that are coming out and I'm kind of pivoting my um, career to it in the next few months. And so I hope you'll be along for that ride. If anyone from OpenAI is watching, please get back to work. I can't wait for AGI. Thanks a lot. And uh, Sam, I'm glad that you're back at OpenAI. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Come on, Sam. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Back in there. Back in there. That's it. Looking good. Yeah.